Okay. Good morning. It's Christmas Eve at about 12.30 and we're going to try to do a Christmas uh, a goose. This is the first time I made a Christmas goose and we'll see what happens. I was talking to a chef last night and he gave me a couple pointers and I have the internet here to help. Here's a 12 pound goose and uh, let's get started. I got my hands and a knife and uh, first we will unwrap the goose. This is a 12 and a half pound goose and we're going to try to do this by fabricating the goose, which is a word that I learned last night that means cutting it up so that everything will cook evenly. You'll see we're going to dismember this goose and then cook them separately and then bring them together on the, on the, on the table when we make dinner. What is this? One goose. Okay, well, there you go. Now I guess we're going to open this up. Uh-oh. Now all this juice is going to come out. Let me... Go like that. I need goose juice. Well, there's not too much goose juice. Actually, a little bit. Oh, good. Goose blood, goose juice. Whatever. Okay, let's try to get this thing out of here. Hope I don't cut myself. And I'm not using any gloves. We're not operating on any people here. Okay, there it is. There's that goose. We have a little bit of juice for the goose. It's a juicy goose. Well, let's see here. Try to keep some of this goose juice in the bag. So we're gonna lift the goose up, and then in the bag we had this goose juice. I'm gonna take the goose juice and pour it into the sink, then take the goose juice bag, try to put it away without getting any goose juice anywhere. Maybe I'll rinse off my hands a little bit. You know it's gonna be messy here. Okay, now we have the goose. Now let's see. Got the wings here and the thighs here. I guess this is the breast. The breast side up. First, you're supposed to take out oh, a lot of goose fat back here. Okay, first, you're supposed to take out this thing, the gizzards. And yeah, we're going to, most half the time, we don't do anything with the gizzards actually, but we always think we're going to make a stock or gravy. And here's the neck, so we can do the same thing with the goose neck. We'll put that in the sink here. Anything else in here? What do you got? Hey, I guess maybe that's the being goosed came from. Okay. Now, by fabricating it, we're going to take off the wing here. Let's see. Just got to do the back. Okay, let's see here. We're cutting down on the, on the wing back here. So no goose juice gets on the floor. If Portia watches this video afterwards, my wife, and I know I'm not guilty. Uh oh, it's not coming out so easily. Now I do have a secondary backup plan where we have an electric knife. I wasn't sure how well the electric knife would go with raw meat because I never use it with raw meat. But let's see here. Easy as that video I just watched. That's like, oh, there we go. We got some, got some going on here. Okay. Let's see. This guy, he took this and he put it like that. So that's a wing. Okay. Now we'll do the other wing. That wasn't too bad. Maybe this. We gotta send some thanks out to Steve, who, um, Steve or Bill, I forget who. I guess it was Bill. Yeah, Bill's coming over to dinner tonight. I gotta thank him for sharpening these knives or else I would never have been able to do this. Okay. Well, right, let's go back. I wanna be able to do surgery. I'm gonna go back in the office this week. Okay, here's another wig. Got a wig. Okay, now what did he do? He put this in there. So I, I guess like that. Okay. So that's two wigs. Okay, now we got the we have the, the leg. Now, here is the, trying to figure out which side is the, this gotta be a back here. This gotta be a back, here's the tailbone, so that's gotta be a back. 
So this has got to be the front. So I learned this morning from the internet, this is the keel bone. So let's try to cut right along down along the keel bone to get the breast out. It would be a miracle if this works, guys. But miracles happen. Let's see. Can I cut right along down around the... I'm not as good as this chef was, but... Trying. Okay, we get right along down with one that breast. And oh, it's working kind of. If it wouldn't be working at all, I gotta shout out to my pal Bill, who helped me by making this knife sharp. Let's see. The reason I think we want to do the breast is because some of the meat intermingles with the leg, I suppose. I guess I should have done it. I don't, I'm not sure if it really matters. But we're going to find this out together. This is coming along pretty nicely. I'm getting it all. It helps to be a surgeon, I think, for this. So if you have any surgeons in your family, have them do the cutting, okay? It is like a little surgical procedure here. You see, here's where the, the breast kind of connects with the, the top of the bone there. That's why I'm kind of. Still don't know if it's better to do one or the other, but you see a lot of fat in it, that's for sure. See, because geese apparently have a lot of fat under the skin. Oh, by the way, you know where the goose of your goose's cooked came from? You know, I don't think we really need all this fat, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut off. See, that's all fat right there. And here's the breast with one of the skin side up. That's nice, huh? So you see, my, my friend um, Julio last night told me that what happens is the, when you do it this way, you can truss up the bird. We're going to do that. Portia's out looking for some, something to truss with. See, now that's not going to make it any worse. It's going to make it a little less fatty. We'll put the one breast there. And here's this is total, total fat. I'm going to toss this. I don't even have to look on the internet for that. Okay. Now... See, we saw these two legs here, but you see how the leg kind of, kind of comes right into where that breast was? Maybe I missed some of the breast, or that's the back, I don't know. Anyway, that may be the thigh, I think, yeah, the thigh. So anyway, here's the breast cut off. We're gonna now do the other side and see if we can get lucky again. Okay. Keep right next to that keel bone, which is the breast bone, right next to it. I missed some of it before because I was a little too out too far, but then I went back and I covered up my mistake. And I'm sure that when we truss it up together, so I'm just kind of getting it off that bone here. I'm sure if we truss it up, it'll be all uniform when we cook it. That's the idea. And this is the way they do the birds when you want to cook for a few hundred people. You want to never make a bird one bird at a time. You want to make it so that Let's see what's this? This fat, huh? Okay, let's cut that down here. I'm kind of flying by to see my pants a little bit, but come on, it's only a bird. It's only a goose. Okay, this is looking good. We're getting this other breast up, so I was able to do it without the electric knife. That's cool. Okay. I guess we're going to keep this carcass, and I guess we need to make soup. I mean, the holidays are here, and it's Christmas Eve and it's Hanukkah, it's the first night of Hanukkah tonight. So there'll be some people coming over the house. And I think that it's always nice that we have a little extra soup. So that's kind of go like this and okay. Now this is real time. We're not kind of stopping the camera, so I'm gonna fast forward if you already saw to another part but you know in the meantime a little goose trivia okay here we go so here we go it doesn't take that long okay i'm going to take this skin and kind of like cut that much skin off and throw it away i guess that's a fat underneath it and if we look here's see i cut through the meat a little bit here but we'll just put it together when we trust it and it all the idea of trusting it so it puts it all together and it's a uniform kind of thickness so it'll all cook the same, we won't get one part 
Because now here's the so far the carcass. Now well, let's get this leg inside on. Okay. Hey, this is going pretty well. Now let's see. If I can get through this without cutting myself. Now, here's the. Butcher. So anyway, the origin of um, your goose is cooked. There used to be a there used to be a a 14th century priest, and his name was John Jus. Apparently, in his language, that meant was very similar to goose, the word goose. So he was, believe it or not, burned at the stake or something. And I guess they used to do that a lot back then. And um, that's why they used to, that's where the expression came from, apparently. Like goose is getting cooked or something like that. So, I'm trying to, I don't know exactly where one meat ends and the back meat begins, but I'm trying to keep as much meat on this thigh as possible. And the thighs cook, take a little bit longer to cook because, and I just learned this a couple minutes ago, something about the, um, maybe I didn't learn too well, something here, let me just get this off. There you go. Okay, no skin. I'm going to toss this. Okay. Now we have the, the leg and the thigh. And then what we're going to do here is do the same thing, divide them. Let me do that. Let's see. I think you feel for the joint. Make a little incision somewhere here. And then crack it. See that? You hear that crack? And then cut right through. See? Right there. And... I hope I don't slip, but if I don't slip, it's, it's working pretty well. Okay, good. Now, there we go. Okay, so here's a leg, a little extra skin here. I'll cut the skin, we don't need all that skin, do we? Okay, you guys who like the skin could go dumpster diving and fry up some skin for you. So there's a little piece there, and here we go. There's the thigh. Now, when you told me about the thigh, what I just looked at, See, I'm learning about a combination of human, human instruction from last night, from Julio, who, by the way, is at Fly and Fish Restaurant. He's like great to have the greatest food there. Okay, now he told me. And then, over the internet today, I learned that all you need to do to debone the, to debone the, the thigh, is. Trying to get in there, and then when you trust that up, you would have all that thin cooking really evenly. This is kind of fun if you're a surgeon, actually. But you got to be very careful with these knives. Okay. I guess it, I guess if I move this, you can see what I'm doing here. Maybe you can see what I'm doing. Okay. Let's see. Here we go. The drama here is, well, he cut himself. And you're going to have it live. So it takes a live drama. It makes it, that's a live TV show. You're not sure about what's going to happen. Okay. Okay. That's the first time I deboned a, we'll keep this with this stuff for the stock. Okay. So here you have the, just the thigh meat. See, like that. But then when we put it together and truss it, Apparently you can cook it and then slice it and you'll get even slices and it'll be evenly cooked. So the time being, I'm going to keep some skin over there so we can truss it together. So this goes with that meat. And we got one more leg to go. Let's see. Maybe we should get rid of all this fat here. I can't imagine needing this fat for anything. Right? I mean, even for the soup, I don't want that much fat in there. I wouldn't be able to get it in there. Let's see. With my wife around anyway. And I wouldn't want it either. So that's not good. Okay, look. This is all fat. That's what they mean by gooses are fat, geese are fat, right? Okay. And even a little bit more here on the other side. Look at this. Maybe you could do something with the fat. Maybe my grandmother used to use goose fat and chicken fat and all the foods and spread it on bread and everything like that, but that was back then in the old country. Okay. Now we're gonna do the last the leg and the thigh here. Oh, so they don't take off the back? I like the back. Shit, I don't know. Let's figure out that. Because I like that meat in the back. 
you know? You know you guys? That dark meat in the background, there's a lot of, a lot of fat here. But we're gonna save a lot of fat juices. It's gonna be a lot healthier for you. I can't, not that. I can't say if it's gonna be healthy. It's gonna be, okay, let me show you what I'm doing here. So, again, this is a lot of fat on the top of this leg, and I think I'm just gonna cut that off. So I'm gonna take this skin and fat and throw that out. And then, well, I'm just kind of cutting real close to the carcass here. Getting this thigh off here. Let's see. What I did was he cracked it. There you go. And then you go like this. I'm telling you, you can teach yourself anything on the internet. So this is cool. So after this, we're going to brine it. Now, doing it this way, by the way, the advantage of fabricating, and again, thanks to Julio, um, the advantage of fabricating is it cuts your, your cook time like in a third. Instead of like waiting all day for the turkey or the goose to cook, basically, these pieces do it a lot faster. Okay, so, here we go. Now, some of my favorite meat, you have to dig for it sometimes, is in here in the back. And I guess I can cut it. What I'll do is I'll come back and cut that off and maybe fry it up a little bit and have a little lunch. But in the meantime, that's your carcass. Okay, and again, again, there's your leg and thigh. Pretty good. Now, where's that other leg? Let's see. How are we going to cut this in half? That's approximately there, right? And let it go like. Let's see. There's meat. Probably goes the, the thigh rather than the leg. Almost done. I wonder how much time we've taken. Probably about 10 minutes or so, huh? Okay. Okay, we're almost done here. Now we're gonna brine this. Now brining, there it is, there's that bone. So now you cut across the bone. This is a dangerous part. Because if it slips, you'll cut your finger off. So don't try this. Before. Okay. So here is the thigh again, and here's the other leg. I'm going to cover it with the, actually I'm going to take this one, I'm going to leave the skin on here because we can wrap it, the skin around it, and then the skin will get nice and crispy, hopefully, and then we will trust it, I mean, and um, they can eat it or not eat it. Okay, now here's that bone in here, and usually I've never done this before, but it makes sense getting this bone out of here because then you can play around with this food a little bit better and when you're cooking it, and you can go to cutting it, and you can eat more evenly distribute it, because you know how everybody wants the bone, you know, with the thigh bone, with all the meat on it. This way, nobody's kind of gave some, you know, a little more peace at the table for Thanksgiving or Christmas or something. But this is kind of cool, Christmas goose. Okay, so we're gonna brine it, and brining is pretty cool. You just it's basically taking the meat and soaking it in salt water solution. And the salt water, because of the pH and the salinity and everything, it makes the, the, the um, you could, you could uh, flavor the goose or the, whatever you're brining by putting other solutes or metabolite, I mean, well, not metabolite, solutes in the, I don't know, the door just blew open. Okay, let's see, we almost got this other, and I still didn't cut myself, so I'm stoked. Just have one more little cut here to make. I gotta be really careful here. I don't want to cut myself at the last minute. Came all this way. Okay. Let's see. Just get that bone out of here. That's been the hardest thing so far. And since this is so slippery with all this. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is, and another advantage, so you, you get a little way faster um, prep um, cooking time, way faster. But oh here, here's that little bone. We use that for the Stock. If anybody has any stock ideas, send me an email. Okay, now here's that thigh. And again, we'll keep the skin on there, we'll wrap it up, we'll roll it up into a little oblong thing, and it'll cook evenly. Okay, now it's also easier to brine it when it's cut up. So you don't have to brine a whole bird and then find room in the refrigerator. Let me wash off my hands here. Um, find a whole bird in the refrigerator. What we're going to do is make our brining solution which is um, 
about a half a cup of salt, a half a cup of sugar. We're gonna use maple syrup and some rosemary, thyme, you know, like that, like that Simon and Garfunkel song, rosemary sage. And then we're going to mix that whole solution in these bags. Okay. I'm gonna put the bags individually since the since the goose is really cut up, it'll be much more easy. You submerge it in there for anywhere from 12 to 24 hours. Julio last night was saying you could do it up to three days, but you don't want to do it too long because then the meat get, might get a little cooked and then tender. So um, when we finish the brining, when we start the brining, I will turn the camera on again. Okay, now we're back. Now what I've done in the meantime is I've taken this big pot over here. This is for the brining. I've never done brining before. So I took about two, two gallons of water and put it in there and about a cup of salt Let's see, more pepper than I thought, maybe about like three big, three or four big heaping tablespoons, two tablespoons of granulated garlic. I think you can put anything in here. You know, we did, if we had allspice, we would have used it. We used about a cup of maple syrup. Um, let's see, salt, thyme, and sage, and really whatever you have, I think we put, this is all the finishing touches, so I wanted to see me put this in. So this is fresh um, thyme and sage. We had some, oh, bay leaves. Okay, and we put these bags. Now one tip is put your bag in a metal bowl or something. See, it also takes less space in the refrigerator rather than do a whole bird. You put them like a little bit and a little bit. So what we did was I put this um, plastic bag in to brine, but the first plastic bag had a hole in it. So we started to see some water around, so we had to transfer it. But now we have the whole thing covered up. And now we have that in there. We're supposed to shake it every now and then. But this will be good. Get the air out. And you know, there's one brining. First, I'm kind of excited because it's my first brining. And then get the air out. And I would just shake it every now and then. And we still have all that stuff in the sink that we talked about before to make the stock because we're going to get a big pot, even bigger than that one, out of the attic that we for special occasions. And we're going to kind of try to make a, a stock. So. Oh, and I first, this is the first time I've used my um, mortar and pestle. And we use that to crush up the, um, what did we use for that? We used, um, no, not the, we tried bay leaves, but they didn't crush too well. The, um, what do you use in, in a Christmas uh, coffee? Cloves, we crushed up the cloves. That's really good for crushed up cloves. So anyway, I was proud that I used that the first time. Okay, so I'll see you later when we take this stuff out in 24 hours. Oh, I pricked the skin. We took like a little sharp object and put it on a, make sure you put it on a wooden board so you don't cut yourself again. And again, so far I haven't. And you just prick the skin so that when this stuff comes out and it goes in the oven, it will kind of drain the juices and it won't be too um, watery and the, and the skin will crisp up very well. Okay, well, that's the plan anyway. See you later. So here we are back after the 24 hours later, different t-shirt when the, um, the fowl is being brined. Now we're gonna open up one of these things. And the idea is for us to get your hand, get my hands dirty and dry them. So we're gonna dry them and clean them from all the stuff and then put some twine together. I got some cooking twine or my wife got some cooking twine. So this is what it looks like after it's brined. It doesn't look that different. A little bit cooked. I guess the meat looks a little darker than it was before. Ah, oh, here's a leg. So that's kind of get it out of there. And then, okay, that was all in this bag. So you see that worked and it didn't even get the didn't even get that thing. I'm just gonna keep all this. I don't think we're gonna use this fluid or anything else, but we'll keep it here. So that's bag with the bags of the fluid worked really well. My mom's plane arrives at 6, uh, 6.45 or 6.15 or something like that. And it is 4 o'clock now, so we're playing it kind of close. So let's see what we can do. Okay, okay now we're doing it with Stevie Wonder in the background. Alexa, volume down. Okay. Well, it's always good with a little background music. And Stevie is really good. Okay, so now we're back after double drying the goose parts. And we're going to trust them now. Now we've pre cut. Some twine, some of this cooking twine, to about, I don't know, a foot and a half, maybe a little bit longer pieces. But we're going to try to make as uniform pieces of this stuff 
as possible. So I'm going to take our breast. Now I hope you can see the, the plate here. I'll put like a little thing here. We'll put maybe two pieces of string on each piece or something. To keep the skin was from the skin, to keep the skin from pulling off. Sure. Ah, okay. uh, we could try this. So let's take two pieces of string here for this one. Put it down here. We have a little assembly line going. We'll keep this piece of skin and roll it around here. Try to get it on there all at once. Like this. Absolutely. That's a fact. There you go. Okay, now we got things going, right? Oh, another breath. Oh, no, there's a thigh. Okay, now I take the thigh and I guess roll it in like this. Beautiful. I guess that's what it's got to be, right? Looks good. That looks good. Okay. Uh, so I need another, uh, can you, uh, Bill, can you do the honors here with this guy?
cards are trust, they're grind, they were wait, what were they? They were fabricated, which means taking them apart, they were grind, they were dried, and they were trust. Looks good. Who's that restaurant here around here? No kidding. trussed up but before we sear the breast the oven is cooking it's actually 4 30 so it's getting a little bit later than we thought mom my mom's flying in in about two hours now we haven't gotten the goose in the, in the oven yet so okay so anyway here's some cut up carrots Wendy and Bill cut up some carrots and rutabaga and other two other root vegetables what are they both? parsnips and turnips oh parsnips and turnips okay so we're gonna take that and make like a little base here then put some of this stuff on here. I guess we're not going to use all of it, it seems. It covers the, uh, the whole bottom. Why not? Okay, they cut them up. Why don't they use it? You have a nice shot of this? There you go for our base. I hope all eight pieces fit on top of this. Maybe not. If not, we're going to have to take them out and do another panful if it'll fit in the oven. Okay, then I think I should cut a drizzle. Some olive oil. I think I should kind of drizzle some olive oil with a little brush over the vegetables, the root vegetables. There you go. Not too much drizzling going on, but I'm sure this can't hurt. The pan may be a little shallow for doing our goose, but I'm committed until at least until my wife gets home. Okay. We'll let that be enough. If it's not a lesson to me. Okay, now we're going to take the pieces of dark meat goose and lay them out. Here's a trussed up thigh. Here's a trussed up leg. Here's a trussed up wing. Okay, let's see. I think we have two more, three more pieces. I guess maybe it will fit. Another wing, and there's the thigh. So that looks pretty good, right? Sure. And then we're going to take, after we get done with that, that's going to go in the oven when the oven is at 350. And then we're going to go over and sear the breast. The, uh, that should be pretty interesting, so stick around. Okay, now we're going to do the searing. So we have a pretty high heat, medium high heat. Here's the burner. We'll take a cast iron pan. I think we'll do them one at a time because we don't want to. We don't want to crowd them out here. We're just going to wait until the pan gets hot. So let's try this. No, I want it to sizzle when I put it on. Let's wait a little longer. When we get it hot. Like the professional chefs do, right? Oh yeah. You always hear it sizzling and smoking oh. and everything a little bit. So we're just going to we're just going to do it like the pros here. Wait a couple seconds. 
Hey, Stevie, Alexa, play Stevie Wonder. Alexa. Shuffling songs by Stevie Wonder. Okay, there you go. Oh, this is a good song. Okay, Alexa, louder. Okay, let's see if it's ready yet. Not really. There you go. That's nice, peaceful, searing music, right? It is. I play the castanet. Okay, let's try this one more time here. Ah, there's a sizzle. Okay. I guess we should just go like this. Close up when we sizzle Please. And he says, when you sear it, just let it sit there. Don't move it. Don't do anything to it. Let it sit there for a few minutes. It's like 4.32 now. Let's sit, it there. Let's sit, let's sit, let's sit there for about two minutes without even moving it at a medium-high heat and see what happens. I don't know. This is the first time I've ever done it like this. So it's kind of a suspenseful thing going on here. Okay. Well, it's rendering to the fat so you can see some fluid. You want to... Focus in on that meat. Look at that. It's kind of shrinking the skin a little bit and rendering some of this fat because I didn't put any oils or juice in here. All I did was I put salt on here. Okay. No sugar? No. Well, that smells really good. Doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Okay. Now we can look sideways. I think you said look at it sideways and see what's happening there. But none of the meat has been cooking yet. So I think we're still good. And I guess we could do both in the same one, but... We have time, so we'll just do one at a time. Let's see. Like when the meat just starts cooking, that's when you get a good seal. Look, it's not sticking at all. How do you like that? That smells good. See, I didn't put any oil down. And usually you would think you put oil down there, right? All right, we might have a good Christmas dinner. I don't know if we'd be on time, but we might have a good Christmas dinner. Okay, let's see. That was only one and a half minutes, I think. I don't know. We don't. We don't know. Don't know. Okay. Maybe about like whatever we think. Is Experiment. Right. Yeah. Whatever we kind of think is right. Yeah. Okay. That's great. But it's not sticking, and it's at a medium high heat. Look at all that. Look at all that juice, the goose fat that it's liberated so far. That is incredible, huh? That means it's going to be coming out on those, on those little punctures we made earlier. Now it looks like it's just maybe starting to cook a little of the meat here. Let me peek. Nah, not yet. I want it more than that, right? That's amazing. Right? That is amazing. I would not I would think it would be so stuck yeah. that you wouldn't be able to get it out of the pan. Look at all that fat. We're gonna have to pour that fat out before we do the second breath. Looks right? like it. Yeah. Pretty amazing. It's like a science project, right? Getting there. Okay, I guess we should have done this on the back burner. There'll be less of splash on the floor. We could do that next time, I guess. That's cool. Yeah, now we're cooking with fire. We're always afraid to use the fire, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But you got all these records and you just crank it up, right? Yeah, nice stove. That's a great stove. <laughs> <laughs> That was good. Okay, now let's turn it over. Just a little bit on this side. That was pretty good, right? Yeah. It's not sticking. We just want to do a light sear on this side. I bet that side sears quickly. Yeah, probably. Let's see. A little bit more, huh? It's amazing all this stuff, huh? Got a thing. Don't you worry about a thing. I would say that's about enough, right? Just to brown it, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, let's go like this. Turn off the heat for a second. Put this one over here. Okay, welcome back. 
Okay, so now we've done the bird, the dark meat, for about 45 minutes and turned it over a little bit. And the inside temperature of that is about 140. We want it to be about around 160 to 170. Now, this, this is just the seared white meat. We're going to put that over here. At least that's what I was told. I like that. We've already emptied out the oil a little bit. I'm going to put this back in for about 45 minutes, I think. And then I think that we should be on the... We took the roasted vegetables out. We put them in a separate pan in there. Because we didn't want them to get too oily with grease. So now, we'll actually, before we do this, let's put the thermometer in one of these breasts. Make sure we can look at that. There you go. And this should be done. Let's give that 45 minutes, huh? <laughs> Good one. <laughs> okay, well. Timer. Let's see. Stop. Timer. 40. Make it 40 minutes. So we can check. And you know, if I know me, I'm a nervous Nelly, so we're going to check you for you. We have the roast vegetables. We're done. We've taken them off separately. And they're really good, actually. Very yummy. After we just need a few, we're going to heat them up a little bit. But let's just check and see what's happening here. Okay, the uh, dark meat's 150, and the white meat is barely up to 110. So everything's going good now. We want the white meat to be about 125 to 130, and we want the dark meat to be about 170 to 75. Or 60 or something like that. I don't know. Okay, now we're going to see what happens here. Okay, we, it's been in for about 33 minutes, the breasts. And then the, but, but the thermometer, the thermometer, we're about exactly where we want to be. The dark meat is 170, and the light meat is 130, exactly right over. Okay, so we're going to take it out and see what it looks like. Take one of them. Let's see what happens when we start to slice it. Now that is a cutting board. Yeah. Let's see what this thing looks like. I think you're supposed to let it sit. But we can just take our slice off one part of it. Oh, look at that. It looks exactly the way we want it, doesn't it? Uh, yeah, yeah, I think so. Medium rare, right? <laughs> You're a jack yeah, of all trades, I'll tell you. Let's see. Perfect. Okay. So we made it by the time my mom got here. <laughs> Yay. So what they can say that we can do hmm? is to crisp it up by putting it in a frying pan. Right? And I think we're done because we're good. All right, so we're going to take this and just sear the fat. Don't just for a better presentation, I think. You see, make, it's just, it's pretty good. We want to sear a little bit more, right? Okay. So now you see that the, uh, we seared it just a little bit. So now we're going to put it down here on the cutting board. I, I don't know anything with this one. Yeah. Let's sear it just a little bit now. The dark meat meanwhile came out. It was exactly 170, 175. 160 is coming down now a little bit. I think we're good with this. So... Okay, this looks good now, right? Not a whole thing. Maybe a little bit more. <laughs> Maybe just a little bit more crispy, huh? I've been goosed. <laughs> you keep saying that. That's my mother saying I've been goosed. Jeez. Okay. We got some lock. I think we're supposed to let this sit for about 10 minutes before we cook it, right? I mean, cut it. Oh. Well, you, you really love that. That little breast, huh? Yep. Huh? I'm gonna sit here. Here's the finished product. Okay. okay. Milk for done. Take a look at that here. Maybe make okay. it. Okay. 